The ACF get field function is one of the first things that you really need to learn and get comfortable with to start using advanced custom fields in your themes and templates. In this video, you'll learn the basics of how to use the get field function. We'll go over what it does, how to add it to your themes template files, and also how different field types and field settings can affect the outcome of get field and what it returns. Let's head over to the custom field section in the back end and set up a new custom text field to play around with. Just add a new field group, give it a name, then change the name of the default text field to my text field, and save the field group. This will add the field to every post on your website. Next, open up any post in the back end of your website to edit it. Then scroll all the way down to the bottom to that new text field that we just added, and add some content to it. Then update your post. And now we're ready to add some code. Head over to your code editor and open up the single.php file from your theme. This template controls the single view for all your posts. As you can see, I'm working in a very basic theme. This is a custom one that I built just for this tutorial, and I did it to make everything pretty easy to follow along with. There's not really anything extra in here, but you should be able to follow along in pretty much any theme. From here, we're gonna add both the ACF get field and the field functions. That way I can show you the difference between the two. These functions both accept the same exact parameters. All you need to do is pass the function the name of the field you're working with as a string. So in our case, that's my underscore text underscore field. Now let's add the first function, the field, to the template file. This will just display the field on your website, and that's pretty much all it's gonna do. You really can't do anything else with your field if you use this function. But that's where the get field function comes in. So let's go ahead and add that to our template as well. And the way get field works, it doesn't actually display anything. It literally does what it says. It just gets the value of the field and returns it to you. So let's wrap it in a var dump and that'll give us a little bit more information about the value that get field returns. And now that we have all that set up, let's open up our post on the front end and see what we got. And you should see that your the field function is outputting whatever that content was that you added to your field. And the var dump of get field shows that same exact content, but it also shows us that it's returning a string. The fact that it's returning a string is actually really important to know because depending on the field type you're working with and the settings on that field, you won't always get a string back from get field. You might get an array, an object, a Boolean, and for that reason, vardump can be super useful when you're working with get field, especially if you're new to this. If you're having a problem with a field, you need to debug something, just put it in a vardump and make sure you're actually getting back the value that you expect and that you're using it the right way. Also, if you do run into some kind of ACF problem, you get stuck on an issue, you just can't figure something out, Leave me a comment and I'll try to help you out. And if you learned something from this video and you want to see more like this, make sure you give it a thumbs up so that I know and I can prioritize making more of this type of content. I do plan to make more ACF basics videos and even projects using ACF. So if you're interested in that, consider subscribing. That way you don't miss them. And now that you've seen this basic example, let's talk about how this actually is useful and why get field is better than the field in almost all cases. Let's say we wanted to display this text field inside of an H2 tag. We can do that with the field, right? We just wrap it in an h2 tag like this. And we could also do it with get field. We just need to echo it out inside of an h2. And if we do this, you can see there's less code when we're using the field. We don't need to use the echoes or any of that. So maybe the field's better? Well, let's check it out on the front end. And you can see they look exactly the same, as we would expect. But what happens if we delete the content in our text field? Well, if we do that, then go back and refresh our page and inspect it, you can see that there's now two empty h2 tags. And that's not good. We don't want h2 tags with no content in them. And we can't really fix that if we're using the field function, but with get field, we can. So let's go back to our single PHP file and update some code. If we take our get field function and store it in a variable, then write an if statement to see if it has a value before we output anything, that'll get rid of our empty h2, or it should at least. So let's do that and then check it out on the front end to confirm. And you can see that we now only have one empty h2 tag, and that's from our the field function. The only way to really get rid of this using the field is to wrap it in a conditional that makes use of get field. So we might as well just use get field from the start and not even use the field. And that's why I think get field's a lot more useful and more versatile than using the field. I, I really rarely use the field function anymore, but it's still useful to know how it works and know that it is an option. Now that we've taken a look at get field with a basic text field, let's try it out with a different field type, one that has more options. Head back into the custom field section and open up your field group that we made. Delete the text field that we've been working with and add a new field. But this time, let's make it a dropdown field. So choose select as the field type and then give your field a name, like my dropdown. Then scroll down and add some choices to your dropdown. 
Choices can have both a value and a label. They just need to be separated by a colon to make them work this way. And each option needs to be put on its own line. So let's add three options, one, two, and three. The values will be the numbers and the labels will be the words. Now scroll down a bit to the return format section. This setting will directly impact what get field returns with this field type. We can choose to return the value or the label, which will just give us a string with a single value, or we can choose to return both the label and the value, which will give us an array. We could also enable the option to select multiple values in our dropdown. If we do that, we'll also get an array, and we may even get an array of arrays depending on the other setting. So let's choose to return both the value and the label and then save the field group. Now we need to go edit our post again and choose an option for our new field, and then update the post. Once we've done that, we can head back to our single PHP template file in our code editor and delete all the existing ACF code. Then we're gonna add some more code to get our dropdown value. We'll make use of get field and store it in a variable. Then var dump it just like we did before and see what it returns. Now, if we go back and refresh our page, we can see that we do in fact have an array with both the value and the label, which are also the array keys. Now that we know we have an array and we know the array keys, we can update our code to echo out each of these separately if we want to, making use of the variable that we already created and the array keys that we know now. So let's do that and then go back and refresh the page again. And you can see we now are displaying both the label and the value that we chose in just plain text since we echoed them. And that about covers the get field basics, but there's still a lot to learn.